And welcome back, everybody. Here now with a Dr. Mary Gillis, medical reporter, of course, for Wish TV. We talked, I think it's been a couple of weeks ago. It's so, yeah. it's so nice to have you back. And this, this topic today is, is an interesting one, all about wisdom and loneliness. Mm -hmm. And I think this is especially important to talk about this year with COVID and then, of course, older Americans as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the first thing I want to say about, um, gosh, our elderly population mm -hmm. is known to be one of the lo most lonely yes. individuals. Um, yes. It's uh, data supports that those mm -hmm. between 50 and 65, and then again those over 90. That's what this um, most recent paper that we'll be talking about today is. Yeah. And it um, it makes for a high percentage of healthcare costs. Mm -hmm. So, and I was reading research that said that loneliness is the equivalent to smoking 15 cigarettes a day. So it's very wow. very. Um, is toxic and can be yeah. dangerous. So well, when it needs you put to be it and you put it into like a visual uh, component like that, you know, in that comparison, it's like wow, that that can really be something. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting how it's compared to wisdom and loneliness. When I, I hear wisdom, it's a little bit different than what I thought this actually was. It's interesting, right? Yeah. Because when you think of wisdom, you think of knowledge, you think right. of education. Um, but in fact, wisdom is something that is is made up of um, different things. It's sort of it's an, mm -hmm. it's a part of our it's an emotion. However, yeah. it's based upon our partially our environment, and right. it really has to do with elements such as compassion, empathy, mm -hmm. self reflection. That's what really constitutes wisdom, right. that personality trait of wisdom. And we learn that when we're around other people, but you were telling me that now it's different. We, we don't have that. We almost lose it, so to speak. Exactly. So it's interesting that in this study, it was a survey, it was a cross-cultural study, both in Italy, in Italy and in America, yeah. and there are about 500 individuals who were surveyed, and there was a wisdom score. Those who so scored higher on the wisdom score, those... Um, components hmm. of compassion, ability to convey compassion and empathy and those right. things that we were just speaking about, uh, we're less likely to be lonely. And we know mm -hmm. if wisdom and compassion and all of these things that we're talking about is part of our environment, well, who's in our environment? Right. If we don't have people, people in our own people, people, then we can't exercise these things that we are naturally inclined to do as human beings. Right. Self-reflect, interact, uh, reflect on a conversation, mm -hmm. um, have empathy, uh, chime in when the time is right, or pull back when the time is right. right. So exactly. what you start to lose, it's sort of, it is, it's sort of like a muscle, you lose that capacity, that part of yourself. and. That's, That's really what so loneliness is, the, the link between loneliness and Well, you and often wisdom. don't think about it like that. I know Tracy and I have talked about before, like, you know, I would love to be fluent in another language. And mm -hmm. it's one of those that I took classes in high school, but if you don't use that, you lose that. And that's the only really part that I had compared it to, but this one makes sense. And it's just, I think it's something that we all need to be aware of, which leads me to my next question. Is there anything we can really do right now? I know we're still learning and navigating this path of COVID, but mm -hmm. if we have elderly loved ones, family members mm -hmm. who might be experiencing this, what can we do, if mm -hmm. anything? So there are a couple things. This area of loneliness, mm -hmm. specifically in the elderly, is a vastly underfunded and under-researched area to begin with. We are just oh, now starting to understand um, that people, heart attacks are linked to being lonely. People are likely to bore, be more depressed if they are lonely. So yeah. all of these links between these um, morbid conditions are associated with loneliness, poor quality of life. So this is, hmm. we're just starting to get this, uh, this information out there. So yeah. now, first to just really be aware. Aware, that awareness, <laughs> that's huge. <laughs> and compassionate, right? Yes, a a aware that this yeah. is actually real. We can't, I mean, we can measure loneliness on a scale of bullets mm -hmm. and, and a questionnaire, but this is actually happen happening. People are lonely, and they may not even realize that they're lonely. That's the other question that we need to, under that we need to think about, that people really don't, oh, wow really realize that they're lonely. Um, so first, this is a very under-researched mm -hmm. area. Um, with COVID on top of that, then we're going to have to start to thinking about how we can deal with this with, with COVID. Right. And um, that's something that we, but for now, we want to be aware. We want to understand, yeah, understand what wisdom is um, and how it relates to loneliness, yeah. why we need to be able to engage in compassion mm -hmm. and self-reflection with people before we lose those skills 
and then we can think of interventions yeah. in ways in which we can help people. So that'll yeah. be something that we can talk about. Yeah, that you said maybe we can touch on next week. Uh, it's just it's amazing having people around you, mm -hmm. you know, Very an interaction can make now. such a big difference. Mm -hmm. uh, Mary, thank you so much. Thank you for your time. Of course, we'll put all the information on our website, IndieStyle.tv. And as she said, we will have yes. more as well with her thank next you, week. Amber.